In 2018, something incredible happened. The Air Spring Geyser at Yellowstone National Park in the Upper Geyser Basin erupted after years of being dormant and peaceful. And as onlookers watched this geyser erupt, their joy turned to disgust because as they watched this geyser erupt, more than water and steam was coming out of the ground. There was also trash flying everywhere. So today, I thought it might be interesting and educational to learn about all the items that have been retrieved and ejected from geysers. So let's get started. Another experience I recall from my childhood was visiting my local zoo and going to the hippo enclosure. And right there was this wall of human stupidity. And what it had on it was all the items they had retrieved from the hippo tank that guests had either dropped or thrown into the hippo tank. And I, I would just imagine what it must've been like for those zoo employees to try to get into that hippo enclosure and safely get those things out. I think that there's a lot of fascination with throwing things in the water. When I take my children to a national park and they see lakes, they always wanna throw rocks into the river and, and the lake. And, and I think that, that people might even have the same desire around geysers. So let's get started talking about some of the crazy things that came out of Air Spring Geyser. And we're gonna play a little game called, Can You Guess What Came Out? So check this picture out, make a guess. And think about which of these things actually came out of the geyser. All right, you ready to hear what actually did? There were over a hundred coins, a cinder block, aluminum cans, cigarette butts, straws, plastic cups. Now the cinder block, I'm really kind of curious about how that got in there. The coins, aluminum cans, straws, plastic cups. I kind of get where how that happened, but here's where it gets a little interesting a rubber heel insert. Do you think someone like stepped in the geyser and their shoe melted off their foot? Who knows? A warning for grizzly bears metal sign had been in the bottom of this geyser. A Polaroid black film case. I can just imagine how this happened. You just see someone like bending over to take a picture of this geyser from, I don't know if the boardwalks existed. They haven't always existed. So maybe back then people could just walk whenever they want, wherever they wanted and they may have just dropped their case into that geyser, who knows? And then the last one that I, well, one more before we get to the grand prize, but there was science equipment that had been dropped into it. Can you just see someone coming out to do an experiment and just dropping their glass beaker and rubber tubing right into the geyser they were supposed to test? And then the last one that just kills me is a baby pacifier from 1938. Are you kidding me? And that thing is 80 years old and it's been in the bottom of a geyser. I just can't believe that. And what I really can't believe is how did that get in there? Do you think a little baby was crawling around? I hope the baby didn't fall in that geyser too. Okay, next. There's actually been a similar situation happen to another geyser in Yellowstone, which actually isn't a geyser. It's a spring called Morning Glory Spring, which is one of the very famous springs of Yellowstone, very beautiful, very blue. But in 1950, they were siphoning some of the water out of that geyser and it caused the surface temperature to cool and the whole thing erupted and exploded, which is not common for a spring, but it happened to morning glory. And once again, to everyone's astonishment, trash spewed everywhere. Now, since this erupted in 1950, the, the things that came out of it were a little older. So Take a second to look at that picture and make your best guess. Are you ready? Okay, first of all, lots and lots of bath towels came out. People must have loved to dip their toes in, in morning glory and take a little, a little swim or, or dip. 76 handkerchiefs came out of that. That lets you know that it's old when you think about no one carries hankies around anymore, but that must have been a thing. This one kills me. They retrieved $86.27 of pennies, pennies, almost 10,000 pennies were in that spring. And they also retrieved $8 and 10 cents and other coins. And then the, the coup de gras, a couch. They retrieved a couch for morning glory. I, you know, now I feel like those rangers watch everyone like a hawk. You get in trouble if you walk a little too fast on those boardwalks. But back then they probably didn't have the supervision we have now. And I, I don't know what someone was thinking when they threw a couch in there, but 
a couch was in that geyser. Boo, 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 boo. Okay, so I always try to, when we look at the past, um, I, I know you guys, those of you that have watched our channel know that Matt's a, Matt teaches college history. And believe it or not, I actually was a history major myself, although I don't teach history anymore. I teach special education. But, um, but I remember learning in college how important it was to not judge people of the past too harshly because they didn't know the things that we know, right? It's just not fair to do that. However, it is still kind of fun to look back at some of the crazy things that people did. And Yellowstone National Park is no different. In 1870, when it became a national park, there was no one to, to be steward over it. And so all sorts of crazy things were going on, poaching, vandals, just things like that. And so Army was given the job of caring for National Park, and they did that for the first 30 years. Now, the Army did a great job doing that, but they really weren't conservationists. And one of their common practices was to throw their clothes into a sack and then throw the clothes into a geyser so that the hot water would get those clothes nice and clean. And when the geyser finally erupted, it was find your clothes time because they'd be all over the place, but they would be sparkling clean. As Yellowstone became more popular, guests would come and they would do a similar thing, except they'd go buy soap at the visitor center and put it in the geysers to enhance the explosion. And this was such a popular practice that the visitor centers couldn't keep soap in stock. Now, as a result of some of these crazy practices, it damaged and even made it so a lot of the geysers didn't erupt. Going back to Morning Glory, the new name for that geyser kind of now is Fading Glory. It used to be a very beautiful blue color, lots of shades of light blue, dark blue, turquoise. But as the, the heat ducts in the, in the cavity below the geyser have closed or been blocked, it's raised the temperature of that spring, allowing other kinds of algae to grow into it. And so instead of just the blues, now there's some yellows and, and oranges that are growing around and it's just not quite the deep blue, beautiful color it used to be. Now, one might think, okay, so people back in the day were not the smartest with taking care of the geysers, but actually there's been a few incidences that have made me think maybe we haven't come as far as we hope we had. The first one happened in 2018 when a visitor from Norway flew his drone right into the Grand Prismatic Spring. Now this wasn't intentional, it was an accident, but that drone crashed into Grand Prismatic and they still haven't been able to retrieve it. That's one of the things that makes me even more curious about things that were thrown into geysers is that some of these geysers have a very high acidity level to where it will disintegrate things that go into them. Uh, there's been some pretty gruesome stories of people that have fallen into geysers and they never found much of the person. And that's been kind of the case with this drone. They Yellowstone does actually have this long mechanical arm that they use to try to get things out of geysers when accidents happen, but they have not been able to retrieve this drone. Um, this last one happened in 2020, where about, I think it was three guys attempted to, to cook some chicken in a geyser. They got their burlap sack, they put a couple of raw chickens in there, and they put it in a geyser to cook it. They were caught and they were heavily penalized. Um, I think that that you and I both, and probably most people watching this, definitely agree that they don't they don't want our natural treasures to be getting ruined by tourists making dumb choices. And hopefully this video has given you a little chuckle and a little bit to think about on being careful around some of our beautiful natural resources. Give this video a like if you found it interesting or helpful. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.